Housekeeping Company. You're listening to Radio Warnford. Free Hospital Radio for South Warwickshire. Free Hospital Radio for South Warwickshire. This is Johnny Walker speaking at the Edinburgh Fringe where I've been doing an interview show and I'd just like to say hello to all the patients at the hospital and wish you a speedy recovery. May you get to go home very soon. What happened aboard the pirate ships and the offshore radio? Well, we had a lot of fun. We were out there in the North Sea in the 1960s and we had the great pleasure of playing really good music, which there was in the mid-1960s, to millions of people in Great Britain who couldn't hear it anywhere else. And can you remember what your first track was and what it was like when you first started? I think one of the first songs I ever played was on Radio England. I think it was The Hazy Shade of Winter by Simon and Garfunkel was one of the first tracks I played. Everybody used to wonder how on earth we managed to play records in the gales when the sea was very rough. We actually had really, really good broadcast turntables with hydraulic arms and also we used to sellotape a couple of pennies onto the arms. So it was very heavy, so it would wear the records out quite quick, but they didn't jump. Sometimes it gets so rough, you'd have to get a piece of rope, tie it to the leg of the desk you were sitting at, round the back of the chair and tie it to the other leg to stop yourself getting thrown about. So it was quite hairy sometimes, but then in the summer you get beautiful calm days and lovely evenings where the moon would be reflecting on the very still waters. It's amazing how still the sea can be. It can be like an absolute mill pond at times, and then at other times it can be extremely rough. Sorry about all the noise going on here, but we're in the Freemasons Hall in Edinburgh, which for the Fringe has been converted into the New Town Theatre. And I've been doing an interview show. I've just done an hour talking to Kate Aidy. And it was a wonderful show. Yeah, it was good. Who's the best person you've ever interviewed and why? Well, I think Kate's probably one of the best, really, and certainly in recent memories. But I think my ultimate hero is Bruce Springsteen. I managed to interview him a couple of times. So that would be, I think, the number one for me. Goodness, and what's he like? He's fantastic. He's just like he is on stage. He's had such huge success, but he's very much a man of the people. He just seems to be the Bruce Springsteen that he always was, way back before it all happened for him. I know as a presenter, I suppose you pick your style of radio, don't you, when you're trying to come across in a certain way. What made you decide on the way that you chose to present? Well, when I started, I worked for an American station, and it was all very high energy. And we used to call ourselves boss jocks. And we had to grin all the time. So you had to fix a smile to your face and it was all, Hi, this is Johnny Walker on Sweet Radio England. You know, it's a very American style of thing. And when I got to Radio Caroline, I could just start to develop to just being me a little bit. And that's really the style that's just, I think, naturally evolved, is I want to do talk on the radio like I talk to somebody like I'm talking to you, really. It was just a technique that was right for me. They also taught me don't use plurals, don't say ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls or something like that because you're reminding the person listening that they're one of thousands or millions. But if you just say hi, how are you? If you just talk to one person, you can try and make that person feel there's only one listening and that's them. That's been my style really. And you've spoken a little bit about how they taught you to grin while you were speaking on the radio. How else did it compare American broadcasting and the way you broadcast on Radio Caroline? Well, it was just the American style. They thought if they bring real American Top 40 radio to the United Kingdom that people would love it and they would become heroes and the station would do really, really well. Well, the exact opposite happened, really, that people were very used to the existing pirate stations like Radio Caroline and Radio London. They didn't like these brash new Americans coming on the scene sort of pretending that they were the number one. So it didn't really work. And before too long, the station owners decided the best way to make money would be to broadcast Dutch programming into Holland because the signal went into Holland as well as it came into the UK. So that's when I changed from Radio England to Radio Caroline. Radio Caroline gave me the opportunity really to get my own show from nine to midnight. I used to get an awful lot of people listening. At night time, the ionosphere, a layer way up high, lowers and radio signals bounce off it. Our signal might bounce over Birmingham or somewhere, but you could hear it in Scotland. So I got a lot of Scottish listeners, really, who could hear Radio Caroline at night, whereas they couldn't hear it during the day. And that's really where I established myself on Caroline. And then I joined Radio 1 in 1969. What was that like? Very different to pirate radio. A lot more rules, regulations, a producer with a stopwatch. On Radio Caroline, we just a DJ in a very small studio, pretty much choosing whatever you wanted to play saying what you wanted to say and just having a great time. Whereas at the BBC it was much more formal and much more structured. So I struggled with that for quite a while until I kind of got used to it. 
And were you still able to find your groove eventually at the BBC? Yeah, eventually. I'd, well, I was at the BBC from 1970 to 76 on the 12 to 2 lunchtime show. And I really enjoyed doing that and managed, you know, establish an audience who liked me to play album tracks and new music. Like, I was the first person to play the Eagles and Steely Dan and Fleetwood Mac and Steve Harley and Lou Reed and people like that. And then I left, I went to America, came back in the 80s, did commercial radio for a while and then went back to Radio 1 for a bit and now eventually ended up at Radio 2. That's marvellous. And what's the funniest thing that's ever happened to you, either out in the field or on air? Well, I think putting Roy Oberson's In Dreams on, on Radio England, where I did a six-hour show from midnight to 6 a.m., a long show, and I couldn't really sleep much during the day. There was so much noise going on on the ship. I put it on this record, In Dreams, and the next thing I know, I suddenly woke up, and the record was just going... How long had it been going for? I have no idea. I think I just nodded off. And then the other fun stuff I used to do was to go out on the deck and chat to people in cars who point their headlights at the ship. And they used to flash their lights once for yes, twice for no. And I used to start a conversation going with them, find out their names and where they'd been and stuff like that. And I got them all to come down to the coastline one night and I was on deck and I said, lights on and the whole coastline lit up as far as you could see for about 15 miles. Lights off! And it all went dark again. That was the most fun I've ever had. Yeah. Gosh, I'd love to do well, listen, like have a wonderful 40th anniversary. Thank, thank you very, very much. much for coming to see us. And I'm sorry I'm going to cut it short, but it's not often you get to go and have a drink and perhaps dinner with Kate Ad. Good luck with all that you do at your station. Thank you. Keeping you company. You're listening to Radio Warnford. Free hospital radio for South Warwickshire. Free hospital radio for South Warwickshire.